When you stop eating salt, quite a few things happen, as we often eat plenty of it in our day-to-day -day lives. What sorts of physical changes can you expect when you consistently decrease your sodium intake? It's good news! Do you have a penchant for fast food and french fries? Ordering way too much, then reveling in the glory of a guilty pleasure? Do you love going to the movies and getting a big bucket of buttered, salted popcorn? While all of those foods are delicious, eating too much of them can be bad for your health. That's because, according to Dr. Nikola Georgievich, there is a very definite link between how much salt you eat and how high your blood pressure is. He explained to us, Sodium is linked to hypertension very closely. When you take too much salt, your body tries to regulate this by holding more water inside the body. As a consequence, significant pressure on the circulatory system is created, which instantly increases blood pressure as well. And that's not a good thing. Fortunately, if you stop eating salt, your blood pressure will decrease. So if you're at all concerned about your numbers, it's best to ditch the salt shaker. It's not just your blood pressure that's directly impacted by the amount of sodium that you eat. Rather, according to Dr. Georgievich, salt can do some pretty serious damage to other organs in your body. He told us, Kidneys are also affected by high amounts of sodium. There is a direct link between kidney malfunction and salt intake. Additionally, hypertension damages numerous organs, and kidneys are frequently the first to start failing. Given that you need your kidneys to function well in order to live a normal, healthy life, that's not something you want to be dealing with. Fortunately, once again, you can spare your kidneys that fate if you stop eating salt, according to the National Kidney Foundation. They also offer several helpful ways that you can do so, which include eating fresh meat instead of packaged meat, using spices and seasonings that are salt-free, and eating lots of fruit and vegetables, to name a few. Speaking of kidneys, there's another thing that your salt consumption can have an impact on within them, according to Dr. Anthony Corey, the development of kidney stones. He told us, too much salt increases the risk of developing kidney stones. By decreasing our salt intake, we decrease the possibility of developing kidney stones and kidney disease. In case you weren't aware, kidney stones are small, hard deposits of salt and minerals that form inside your kidneys. But just because they are small doesn't mean they don't make themselves known. If you've ever had a kidney stone or known someone who's had one, you know how excruciatingly painful they can be. To that end, if you've never had one, you can count yourself extremely lucky. But if you have had a kidney stone in the past, or know you're at risk of developing kidney stones in the future, you can take preventative action now and stop eating salt. Do you experience a lot of bloating and swelling either during certain parts of your menstrual cycle or after meals? Do you feel like your body is retaining too much fluid? Well, salt might have something to do with that, according to Dr. Georgievich. He explained to us, since sodium is one of the reasons for water retention, by reducing the salt intake, you will actually release more water from your body. You will feel less bloated and swollen. Studies have confirmed that bloating is one of the top reported gastrointestinal complaints in the United States. And one of the reasons that bloating is so commonplace is because people are eating diets that are far too high in sodium. Feeling bloated doesn't just make you feel uncomfortable and cramped, as well as unable to fit into your favorite clothing comfortably, it can also zap your energy levels and make you feel exhausted, according to registered dietitian Diana Goriglio Cleland. And that can put a serious damper into your fitness routine. She says, When someone feels weighed down with fluid retention, it can be difficult to be active, which also increases energy levels. Some people may feel more energized when reducing their salt intake because of the reduced water retention, making them feel more energetic. That way you won't feel tempted to skip out on your exercise class next time. My trainer said, everybody fails working out. That's how you win. Okay. All right. Ugh. We get it. The idea of cutting salt out of your diet is a grim proposition. After all, that means saying no to a lot of tasty foods, including fast food, processed foods, cured meats, and potato chips. Plus, if you want to take control of your sodium intake, that means you have to be a lot more picky when you dine out, which isn't fun. That also means that reading food labels is going to be a full-time job, and who has time for that? But there's good news, as Diana Goriglio Clareland assures that any sense of deprivation is going to be temporary. She shared with us, While it may be a difficult change to cut back on sodium initially, your taste buds will in fact adjust to the lower threshold. Many people who have cut back on sodium claim that they can't stand the salty foods they used to eat once they've adjusted to a healthier sodium amount. 
So fear not. With a little patience, your palate will adjust after you stop eating salt, and you'll wonder why you were such a salt fiend to begin with. All right, gang. Diet day four. How's everyone holding up? Honestly, I'm going to last forever. Obviously, it's exceedingly important to make sure you're drinking enough water every day. According to the CDC, water is vital in maintaining a healthy body temperature, lubricating your joints, ensuring that your body disposes of waste properly, and keeps your spinal cords safe from pain and damage. And if you live in an especially warm climate, exercise a lot, or are feeling ill, staying hydrated is especially important. But if you find yourself especially thirsty and don't meet the above criteria, you might want to stop eating salt, according to Dr. Anthony Khoury. When we eat a high amount of sodium on a daily basis, we feel thirstier. This is because we need water to balance the sodium levels in our body. By eating less salt, our body doesn't crave water the same way because it doesn't need to normalize sodium levels as much. That's why you feel the need to drink water after indulging in a big bag of salty snacks. Cut that out, and you'll also get rid of that nagging thirst. You guys give up, or you're thirsty for more? Do you find yourself prone to getting headaches fairly frequently? If so, you might be surprised to learn that salt could be a culprit, according to Caleb Backey, a certified personal trainer. As he explained, Sodium has a direct effect on your blood vessels, which may trigger headaches. Research shows that a reduction in sodium resulted in fewer headaches than participants who maintained their sodium intake. That's good news for headache sufferers, especially considering that the researchers made sure to narrow down what was causing the headaches and what wasn't. This was regardless of the type of diet they ate. The only correlation was levels of sodium. This means that when you stop eating salt, you're likely to experience fewer headaches. So even though it's no fun cutting out the potato chips, if that can help to decrease your pain levels, it's worth a shot. If your blood pressure is high enough to qualify as hypertension, your risks of heart disease and stroke are increased. According to Dr. Amin Yeia, a cardiologist at Piedmont Heart Institute, as he explained in an interview with Reader's Digest, Worldwide, 54% of strokes and 47% of heart disease are attributed to hypertension. Excess sodium has blood pressure-independent effects, promoting left ventricular hypertrophy as well as fibrosis in the heart and arteries. What exactly does that mean? Basically, it means that eating too much salt is bad for your heart, period. Fortunately, if you stop eating salt, you can reduce your risk of heart disease and stroke, according to the American Heart Association. Specifically, they recommend that you consume no more than 1,500 milligrams of sodium daily, which honestly isn't a lot. But if your health is at stake, it's worth the sacrifice. The American Heart Association wants to see deaths due to cardiovascular events decrease by 20%, and in order to help that happen, they want to educate people about the dangers of salt and about how eating less of it can make you live longer. Dr. Yeia shared some staggering statistics in an interview with Reader's Digest, saying, Studies have reported that reducing sodium intake by 1,200 mg daily could lead up to 120,000 fewer coronary heart disease cases up to 66,000 fewer strokes, 99,000 fewer myocardial infarctions, and 92,000 fewer deaths from any cause. Additionally, there's other research out there that says if people try to stop eating salt and reduce their salt consumption by having about 1,500 milligrams a day, up to 500,000 people will be spared from heart-related deaths over a 10-year period. If ever there was a time to get rid of your salt shaker, it's now. If you stop eating salt, you'll likely notice that right away you drop a few pounds. Chances are this is water weight you're losing, at least at first, as salt causes the body to retain water. But it's not just water weight that you can lose when you decrease your sodium intake. That's because the types of foods that you stop eating are less healthy than what's included in your new diet, according to registered dietitian Erin Polinsky wade She revealed in an interview with Reader's Digest, if you start to shift your diet to include more whole, unprocessed food, this naturally helps to reduce your sodium intake. This can help to reduce your intake of added sugars and refined carbohydrates while increasing fiber and promoting a reduction in calories that can lead to weight loss. Chances are that if you eat a diet that's high in sodium, you find yourself using the restroom more than folks with a lower salt intake. But according to Erin Polinsky-Wade, it's not the food itself that makes that happen. She explained to Reader's Digest, 
Eating more sodium alone doesn't cause you to pee more, but it can increase thirst. And as you drink more, you are more likely to excrete more urine. It's also important to note that eating a high sodium diet and not drinking enough water can cause additional problems. She also noted, High sodium diets without additional fluid intake can, however, force the body to pull water out of other cells, which may increase the risk of dehydration. And being dehydrated is not a fun experience. That's why hangovers are so awful, and let's face it, you'd avoid those if you could, right? So if you stop eating salt, that's less time spent running to the restroom and potentially fewer interruptions in your sleep. Sounds like a win-win. In addition to having an impact on your organs and circulatory system, eating too much salt can cause damage to your skeleton. Specifically, according to a study that was presented to the Endocrine Society, women who eat a diet that's high in salt are at an increased risk of breaking a bone after menopause. This is regardless of a woman's bone density too. Specifically, the study found that women who consume excessive salt are four times as likely to sustain a non-vertible fracture, which basically means a fracture anywhere but the spine, than women who eat less sodium. And according to Dr. Kyoko Nawata, lead author on the study, changes in diet could help prevent these fractures. Dr. Nawata says, Excessive sodium intake appears to be a risk factor for bone fragility. It is therefore important to consider excessive sodium intake in dietary therapy for osteoporosis. To that end, if you stop eating salt now, your bones will be healthier in the long run, and so will the rest of you. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about lifestyle advice are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.